Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Apologies in advance for my voice, I do unfortunately have COVID right now. And due to the, cir the circumstances, I was not initially planning on making a video today. But then I realized that two whole weeks into my channel, and I still have not made a video on XLOOKUP, which is probably my favorite function in Excel. And in addition to my just love and passion for XLOOKUP, it's also very closely related to my biggest pet peeve in not just Excel, but maybe the entire data analytics world in general. And that's really saying something. Um, and that is people in today's day and age still using VLOOKUP. I don't care if it's VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, doesn't matter. It's still bad. And not just are people using VLOOKUP, but they're spreading it. They're teaching it. It's spreading like the plague. So I, <laughs> I don't want to see it. It drives me crazy. Don't use VLOOKUP. That's the, the, the biggest takeaway message here. So if you have an older version of Excel that does not support XLOOKUP, then congratulations, you, you do get a pass. But if you have Excel 365, please prevent me from just pulling my hair out and never use VLOOKUP again. So instead, just watch this tutorial video on XLOOKUP. All right, I'm done ranting. Let's get started. So this is our first example, and I'm calling this a traditional example because this will be the most common usage of XLOOKUP, and that is pulling in data from one table to another. So a quick caveat here, this is not a good practice in terms of how you should structure your raw data here. So normally, you want this data in a table, and you don't want to put two different tables here on the same sheet. You want to split these up into different sheets. But I'm putting this on the same sheet with just the black bar in the middle here, so it's a little easier for you to see the formatting and the cell references. But again, not a good practice, but just for this tutorial. So I have some data on movies here, and I want to pull in the box office totals for our movies here in our main table. So let's go ahead and use XLOOKUP for that. So XLOOKUP, what we're looking up is going to be the value that we have in common between the two tables. So you see both of these columns, or both of these tables, I should say, have the movie ID. So we want to look up this movie ID within this entire array. Control shift down to select the entire thing. We will be copying this down, so let's lock those cells with F4. And now the return array is going to be the data we want to populate our new column with, which is going to be this data here in box office. So same thing, control shift down arrow, select the entire thing, and then F4 to lock it so we can copy it down. And now we can close parentheses, and let's copy this down. So you'll notice pretty quickly here that we have a bunch of NAs. And that's because we have a lot more total movies than we have movies with data for box office. So a lot of these movies are not going to show up in our box office table over here. And for that, XLOOKUP actually has a very nice feature built in, which is this if not found, which is essentially a built-in way of wrapping this in an if error function. So this is saying if this movie ID is not found in our lookup table here, then what do we set that value equal to? What do we return? So in this case, let's return unknown. We can hit enter, and then let's copy this back down again. And now we have all of our box office data for the movies that we know of, and we have unknown filled in for the data that we do not know. All right, let's move on to traditional example number two. So in this case, I have a school supplies company. And here's our list of products and their corresponding sales for Q1. And now I have all the products being sold in Q2 and their corresponding sales. And I want to pull our Q2 sales in to this table here. So we can use XLOOKUP. And we're going to want to look up the product within this entire array. Let's copy that or lock the cell, I should say. And now let's return our Q2 sales. And again, notice we have some products that are missing in the Q2 table. So calculator and keychain didn't sell all that well, so our company decided to discontinue them. So in that case, let's return that. If not found, we will show a value of zero sales for Q2. We can close parentheses. We have our value. And now let's copy it down. And now we can compare the sales across the two quarters of the same given product. So up to this point, we've looked at exact matches. 
So that meaning in order to find our face mask within our lookup table, we need to have an exact match. So it needs to say verbatim face mask there. Now we're going to look at an example of an inexact match for X lookup. So in this case, let's say you're a teacher, you have 100 students with their corresponding exam score, and you want to assign a letter grade based on the score. So under 60, we'll give an F, 60 to 70, with 60 on the uh, being inclusive, that's what the bracket means. 70 to 80 is a C, 80 to 90 B, 90 and above is an A. So with this 77 grade, for example, here, even though this is we're not going to be looking up an exact value, we still want to be able to return a C. So let's create a lookup column here. So our lookup value. And in this case, we want to put the value that is on the inclusive side of this bin. So in this case, it's going to be 0 and then 0.6. These are percentages here. 0.7, 0.8. And 0.9. And now let's enter in our X lookup. And we're going to be looking up the score within this lookup value column. Lock our cells so we can copy it down. And let's return the grade. Locked. If not found, we don't have to worry about because this is um, collectively exhaustive here. We can just put empty quotation marks, it doesn't matter what you enter in there, you could even just skip that. And now for the match mode, the default is zero for exact match, but we don't want that. Because again, this 79.9% here doesn't match any of our values in the lookup. So we want it to fall within that bin. So instead, let's enter in exact match or next smallest item. So that way, this 79.9 will be matched with the 70% here, and that will return a C. So let's put in negative one. We can close parentheses, hit enter, copy that down. And now we have all of our grades for the given exam score. So one more example here, and this is a possible replacement for the very well-known index match combination. So we have a matrix here, which shows the average duration of direct flights from eight cities to those same eight cities here. And I have a, a travel planner down here where I can select any given city from my data validation list and select any of those same eight cities. And I want to be able to show the flight time based on my selections. So in this case, let's build a two-way X lookup. So first, I want to show the uh, return array in this case. So let's start from the inside out so we can better understand how this is going to work. So first, let's do an X lookup outside of our main cell here. And let's look up the two city within our options here. And I want to return the entire data array. And in this case, one of the beauties of X lookup is that it supports dynamic arrays. And we need to select a two city. In this case, let's select Chicago and LA. I have this built in with conditional formatting. And now we have our array here. And this is going to show us all of the durations from any given city to Chicago. So this is going to be our return array based on our Chicago selection here. So now let's go back into our main cell and write another X lookup. In this case, we're going to look up the from city within these options. And now our return array is going to be this right here. So if we redo that, we can just type in X lookup, and we're looking up Chicago within these options, and returning only that column for Chicago. So now we can close parentheses, close it again for that second layer of nested XLOOKUP function, hit enter, and we get four hours. So we can check to confirm the flight time is in fact four hours, and we can play around with this just to make sure. So LA to Boston is five and a half.
So that's the end of the video today. If you enjoyed and you learned something new and you promise to never use VLOOKUP again, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more of this content in the future. Thanks for watching.